Uh, it's Craig Sellers. I'm the CTO of the MasterCoin Foundation. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here with all the distinguished group of, of people who are here, entrepreneurs, experts, and geniuses. Um, I've been a technologist my entire career, uh, but I've had the privilege of uh, working with the masterminds at the MasterCoin Foundation for the past six months. Uh, and today this presentation will basically be uh, an example of an application of several of the topics that have already been uh, discussed today. Uh, the topic is crowd computing, which uh, is not a phrase that I invented. Uh, there is a Wikipedia page on it. It differs slightly from my interpretation, uh, but I'll go into that. Um, you can ask the question, what is cloud computing? Now, cloud computing, as everyone knows, is if you have content or applications that you'd like to serve, you can either have that on a workstation of your own, a server of your own, etc., or you can take it locally and distribute it globally into a distributed system such as Amazon, for example. Now, smart contracts are similar to cloud computing, but much, much, much simpler. In essence, smart contracts are protocols, they're algorithms, and they allow us to actually have consensus upon what an outcome should be based on a variety of inputs. So for example, right now, in the absence of smart contracts, we all have agreement upon a definitive location where we want to find information uh, or resources. So for example, uh, if you want a prescription, you go to a doctor. If you want a loan, you go to a bank. If you want dollars, you go to the Federal Reserve, etc. With the blockchain and with smart contracts, it's a, it's a slightly different paradigm. Instead of a definitive location where we want to go to receive these resources, we all have agreement upon the storage, the access, and the interpretation of information as stored, in this instance, in the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, Aaron did a fantastic job earlier of describing uh, the mechanism behind the Bitcoin blockchain. But in essence, every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network is mining a block of transactions. It's all of the Bitcoin transactions that have occurred in the past 10 minutes. Now, what each block represents is, in essence, a state change. It is the balance that has changed for each Bitcoin address that was used in the past 10 minutes. But because of that state change, we get to actually use that as a state machine from the MasterCoin perspective. Now, you can ask, what is MasterCoin? Now, in January of 2012, J.R. Willett uh, posted a white paper called the Second Bitcoin White Paper. And what he proposed in that white paper was, in essence, the ability to encode metadata on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. MasterCoin is now the fulfillment of that white paper. It is the business logic layer on top of Bitcoin. We leverage the strength and security of the Bitcoin network. Because of all of the various blockchain technologies out there, the Bitcoin network has the most secure and the most robust security of all the ones that are out there. The global hash power on the Bitcoin network is in fact greater than all of the supercomputers on Earth combined. And so it's the perfect platform upon which to launch Bitcoin 2.0 applications, smart contracts, smart properties, etc. The master protocol allows for the creation of user tokens, smart property, and smart contracts. Now, we're currently deployed with three different features uh, on top of the Bitcoin blockchain using the master protocol. The first of which is simply sending and receiving of MasterCoin tokens. The MasterCoin tokens were generated back in August of 2013. J.R. Willett, working with the BitAngels, decided that there was a mechanism that could exist on the Bitcoin blockchain such that if I wanted to obtain MasterCoins, this new fangled token that never existed before, I would send bitcoins to a particular address called the Exodus address. In return for that contribution of one bitcoin, I would receive 100 master coins. Now, of course, this was done in an entirely transparent manner on the blockchain. So it's completely auditable that I sent that one bitcoin and I received my 100 master coins. So sending and receiving of those newly obtained master coins was the first feature. And the first wallets allowing that feature came out around the December time frame of last year. The second feature which was released on March 15th, is what we call the decentralized exchange. It allows you to buy and sell MasterCoin using Bitcoin with no third party involvement whatsoever. Everyone in here I'm sure is familiar with the uh, exchanges that exist in the Bitcoin space, but they're all centralized. So there is a server somewhere in the cloud uh, that holds your funds for you. Mount Gox is an example. You are trusting this intermediary to hold your funds and exchange your fiat for Bitcoin or Bitcoin for fiat or bitcoins for altcoins, etc., etc. With the decentralized exchange using the master protocol, it was in essence the first smart contract, because what it allowed you to do is create an order book. All of a sudden, me, as a holder of those 100 master coins, can put 10 of them up for sale, and I can put a sell offer out there, 
for, let's say, 10 MasterCoins at a price of 0.1 Bitcoins each. That sell offer can be viewed by anyone using a Master Protocol compatible wallet. And of course, all of these advertisements for sale are on the Bitcoin blockchain, so they're all auditable. Now, using that MasterCoin wallet, of course, I can then go in and accept one of those sell offers. I can say, here's a guy selling more MasterCoins for 0.1 Bitcoins. I'll send him one Bitcoin, and I will get 10 MasterCoins in exchange. Now, the protocol sees that I've accepted that offer, and then it sees that I've moved my Bitcoin to the address of the seller. That simple action of me moving that Bitcoin to the seller all of a sudden magically provides me with the master coins that he was selling. That is the de decentralized exchange, and that is our second feature that we've deployed. Now, the third feature addresses something that Eddie was mentioning, which is how do startups actually fund themselves? Well, MadeSafe is a company out of Scotland who over the past seven years has been developing, in essence, the next decentralized internet. It allows you to basically share your resources and be compensated uh, for doing so and distributing your information across a global network. In speaking with VidAngels uh, and David Johnson, who of course, if you all have heard David Johnson's law, uh, which is that uh, if something can be decentralized, it will be decentralized, he realized that their funding mechanism, I'm sorry, their monetization mechanism uh, could be made more robust if there was a token aspect to it. And therefore, they created something called SafeCoin, which is in fact the resource that you earn by providing your resources to the network. And what they did was come up with a mechanism whereas they could sell one-tenth of those safe coins using the master protocol. Now, their goal was to raise six to eight million dollars over the course of 30 days. And actually, today is the last day of that crowd sale. Uh, this morning at 9 a.m. was the last day that you would be able to purchase made safe coins. However, when we posted the original sale offer of the crowd sale to the Bitcoin blockchain, we did it at 8 a.m. on April 22nd. Within five hours, all tokens had been sold, which I believe is the fastest and largest uh, crowd sale of its kind in history. So in essence, the MasterCoin crowd sale was provided on the Bitcoin blockchain. And I'm gonna provide now an example of sort of how that looked. Um, it's not entirely technical, but it will provide an example. In essence, we encoded metadata onto the Bitcoin blockchain saying, we're going to offer you a contract. That contract says that there's a start point and an end point. April 22nd is the start point. May 22nd is the end point. If at any time during this window, you send me one master coin, I will send you 3,400 made safe coins that I create out of thin air. We also added uh, an incentive mechanism uh, for early adopters. So for each week before the end, you'd get an additional 10% bonus. So for the first week, if you contributed a master coin, you'd get 3,400 plus 40%. The second week, you'd get 3,400 uh, made safe coin plus 30%. Third week, 20%. Fourth week, 10%, et cetera. And of course, everyone took advantage of the 40% because the whole thing sold out in five hours. What you can see here is, in essence, the attributes of that contract, which said start watching the blockchain at this time, stop watching it at this time, and provide a 10% bonus per week. This is part of the magic. This is a screenshot from blockchain.info. The actual advertisement for that crowd sale was a standard Bitcoin transaction. The address of MadeSafe simply advertised through four different addresses using multisig all of those attributes that were on the previous slide that said, here's the nature of this contract. And the fun part is, is Bitcoin is, is basically a two-dimensional uh, transaction ledger. In essence, it says I'm moving a balance from point A to point B. And since we're using it as transport and not as actual Bitcoin, all of a sudden this extra encoded metadata has a third layer to it. So when you look at this transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, it's perfectly valid. But when you put on your 3D glasses, all of a sudden you've got additional information that says, I've created a crowd sale. I've created 3,400 indivisible tokens per unit that I receive. And this stays valid forever. So it can always be audited, it can always be seen. In this instance, of course, it was intended to cut off at a certain token size or at a particular date, but there's no reason why we couldn't have a contract that was ongoing in perpetuity. That implies that if you put logic onto the Bitcoin blockchain and that logic is agreed upon by everyone who participates, that logic can't be turned off, which does provide us a bit of responsibility in the kinds of things that we decide to encode in contracts. But nonetheless, that is how we performed the crowd sale in the master protocol and it is an example of the first Bitcoin 2.0 application deployed today. 
Now, what I'd like to see from the rest of you guys uh, is basically some new ideas. I'd like to see what do we need to make in the next application. What is the next smart contract, and what does it need to contain? And with that, we are the cloud. This is crowd computing. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, uh, any questions? Well, I'd like to start with. Um, I'm Peter from uh, Temple Su Terminals. We do Bitcoin ATM. So I'm, I'm curious whether you could uh, structure MasterCoin in a way that it starts to clear payment in response to real world event. Like for example, a shipment is verified and then it clears a particular payment. Uh, when we were in Amsterdam, a group presented something called reality tokens, I believe is what they were called. Uh, and they were in essence a data feed. It was a yes or no being broadcast onto the blockchain. Um, there's no reason why something like the master protocol can't interpret those feeds and react based on that information that's there. Um, as Elise said earlier, the, you know, Bitcoin itself as a token may not be the perfect token for a lot of these, these items, but we believe that the master protocol actually allows you to build that token on top of the Bitcoin network. Uh, and in your example, that's precisely how we do it. What other uh, examples of uh, uh, other things that are going to be built on top of the master protocol that you can talk to us about? Um, the two biggest ones that we've been talking about recently, uh, we call it the MetaDEX. So right now on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, we have master coins, test master coins, uh, made safe coins, uh, and one other one that was just created in the past couple of days. Currently, the decentralized exchange that exists uh, can only work between Bitcoin and master coin. Uh, one of the next forthcoming uh, developments will be a meta exchange, so that all of those tokens can be exchanged with one another. Uh, another feature uh, is callable assets. So in the event that uh, I have provided you a certain number of tokens, I have the ability to withdraw them, in essence, reversibility of those transactions. Uh, and a third type is what we call savings addresses, such as, let's say I have a, a large amount of, of, of MasterCoin in my, in my Bitcoin wallet, and my key gets compromised. I have the ability with a savings address to use a secondary key to go, uh, no, that transaction over there was not in fact valid. And in fact, it would cancel the send from my compromised address. So again, these are examples of, of logic being added on top of Bitcoin without any changes to Bitcoin itself necessary. So in essence, you can treat it like scripting and the possibilities are in essence endless. Craig. I'm interested to hear more about sort of your vision for uh, the different applications that will actually use um, the currency issuance in the uh, coming weeks and months. Projects you're hearing about, those that are public. Projects that I'm hearing about, those that are public. Um, the biggest one that I'm aware of is the storage network, which is S-T-O-R-J. Uh, Jim Lowry uh, and a couple of, of developers have put together something. They were actually were the winners of the Austin Hackathon. Uh, they're going to be using uh, the Master Protocol crowd sale function at near the end of July, I believe, uh, to do their fundraising as well. This is an intermediary token that would then be valid on the storage network as well. Um, other items, uh, we've got probably 10 or so in the hopper. I'm not sure which ones are actually publicly discussable at this point, um, but most of them are related to uh, uh, basically crowd sale tokens. So in essence, uh, these are pre-sales of access to software is how, is how we're treating these crowd sales. So in the example for MadeSafeCoin, the ability to use the MadeSafe network is predicated upon this token. So as you contribute your MasterCoin to the crowd sale function, you all of a sudden have access to this software as soon as it becomes available. That paradigm is very similar into the crowd sales that are upcoming on our schedule. Uh, David Moskowitz, Coin Republic. Is it possible to um, peg a value of one of these tokens to a real world item, be it gold or a national currency, as real as that is? Uh, in the same sense that Reality Tokens uh, has uh, a data feed that leads into the Bitcoin blockchain with a simple yes or no, uh, there is the possibility of a trusted source, now trusted being everyone would have to agree that it is a trusted source, could publish every single block a data feed including the price of a real world item. Now. A Bitcoin or a blockchain related uh, protocol such as the master protocol does rely only on the information that's available on that blockchain without any external in information. However, external information such as the price of gold uh, can be contributed by that trusted source to the blockchain and the smart contracts can react to that data as it's published. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Sir? Craig. Thank you. And we're going to... Uh,
break for lunch and we'll be back in here and we'll probably start a little after 12.30.